Alright, hey there everybody, how's it going? It's Dragos back here again, and welcome to another instance of me drawing my champion team. Now this time we have moved on to Johto, the second generation. I am doing these in order of generations, not when I got them, because if I did them in order where I got them, it'd be all kinds of messed up, and I would be very confused. And as you can see there, I already adjusted the camera position and how slash where everything is laid out um, from the Kanto champion team because I realized while editing you don't see as much in the Kanto one so with the Johto one I tried to do a bit more um, of an angle so you guys would see it better but anyway we're starting off with our starter Pokemon of course this is actually the only fire type Pokemon I have ever started a Pokemon game with which is kind of funny, and I actually chose Cyndaquil for this generation because I played Heart Gold Soul Silver. That's it. I played Heart Gold and Soul Silver, and I already knew about the evolutions. I liked uh, Totodile a lot, and I liked Chikorita a lot. But I figured, hey, I really ever start with a Fire type, so why not go with the adorable little Fire type here? I believe I called him Blaze. Yeah, I, again, simple naming. I called him Blaze because I was like, yeah, I know what his final form is like. It kind of works. The funny thing is, the most tricky part on trying to draw this Pokemon was actually his hands, just because like how the positioning works. So I had a little bit of fun there, and of course, size-wise, I had to adjust a few things. Because, you know, me not thinking ahead and not realizing I should do certain things. <laughs> anyway. So, of course, as per usual, I like to draw them doing something other than just standing there. So I made a little bit of a fire spark coming out of them. The funny thing is, uh, even though I didn't have the exact colors, I still got surprisingly close with some of the colors. Now, the fire was the easiest thing to figure out, as was the color of the mouth, um, you know, and actually the blue part of them was very easy. It was just the underbelly is usually like a sort of yellowish color. Like it's a yellowish, uh, I guess like a yellowish cream color. Now I could have done that in a very difficult and long process, but as you can see there, I tested out a couple different potential ways. In the end I realized that's not gonna work how I want it to, so I'm just gonna do it how I want it to do it. And of course, starting with the fire, because I realized that's going to be one of the main features. Again, it was interesting to try the chameleon uh, blending method. Uh, also, you'll see it, my face come into frame every now and then from the top right. That's because uh, this is literally just pretty much right next to my left shoulder where the camera is. So I, I had to be absolutely careful not to knock the camera because otherwise it'd be a big doof. And of course I did go back and try to blend it a little bit more with some of the colors. Um, it sort of worked, it sort of didn't work, but it still ended up looking pretty good, which I was happy about. And then of course, uh, realizing where some of the darker colors would be for the blue, I adjusted it so that it's in line with the fire that comes out of its neck. Um, as for where I used this Pokemon, oh, obviously as a starter, I had it in my team the entire time. But Blaze was mostly a Pokemon that I used um, for the first couple of gyms. And then I didn't use him as much in the middle gym area. So I actually saved most of his use for the um, later gyms and the Elite Four. Because that's predominantly where I used him. And I think most of his moves were just fire type moves. Because it was just easier to have him be a fire type Pokemon with fire type moves, you know, thinking ahead. But yeah, honestly, I did quite enjoy using this as my only ever fire type starter. And I'm saying that now. That is the only fire type I have ever used as my starter Pokemon. Every generation, my champion team has never had a fire type starter except for Gen 2. And you'll kind of see that later on with um, some of the other things. Or some of the other art videos that end up coming out uh, in relation to this. But anyway, there's Blaze, all good and done. And of course, me being me, what would I be without an evolution on my team? Because at this point, I had 
because it came out with Gen 4, I already knew about the Umbreon and Espeon uh, evolutions. So when I was thinking about it, I was like, oh, which one do I prefer the most? And then I saw Umbreon, and I'm just like, yeah, I'm going with that one. Because, I mean, what's not to love about Umbreon? It is a really cool Pokemon. The design is simple, but it works so well, and it's really striking. I think I called him Midnight. Yeah, called the Umbreon Midnight. Because, you know, you evolve it at night. It has to have... The friendship didn't really play into a part of it. I think it was mostly because of the design of it. But yeah, when it came to drawing this guy, I realized real quick that like, oh, uh, he doesn't look like he's in a pose using a move. And then I remembered, oh yeah, I taught him Shadow Claw. Because I used him in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, where Shadow Claw was actually a thing. And then I was like, okay, we'll just make it look like he's using Shadow Claw. Now, it's kind of not 100% on how it should look uh, using Shadow Claw, but I was just like, eh, open to interpretation. They get moves wrong in the anime all the time. <laughs> But yeah, Midnight, for the longest time, actually, was a Eevee. And I think it wasn't until a few of the later gyms that he actually became an Umbreon. And I was like, yeah, this is actually kind of epic. I do, I think I do need to adjust where I put the light. But at the moment, even though it's blocking out some of the features, uh, that's just also because the type of pencil I'm using is much lighter because I go from red to blue to outline. Uh, if I'm doing something really detailed, I'll go from red to blue to um, just a standard pencil and then to outline just to make my life infinitely easier. But yeah, here you can see I'm just like, oh yeah, he needs a move. Uh, Shadow Claw. Again, Shadow Claw. Just like trying to make it look like ethereal Shadow Claws. Sort of works. Sort of doesn't work. He looks better with color. I'll, I'll say that much. But yeah... Midnight didn't actually evolve until quite a bit later on because I didn't r actually figure out how to get the friendship up really high uh, until much later in the game. And that was a pain in the butt. So, I think with Midnight, most of his uses came in the later gyms. And I think, yeah, he was the uh, last standing pokemon against the champion that's right so when i actually fought the champion um it was down to one pokemon each midnight was the last pokemon on my team and midnight was a pokemon that i had focused on speed quite a bit so you can safely assume what happened there i outsped all the champ the i outsped the last pokemon the champion had and got in so many good hits of course um he wasn't really a tank, so I did have to heal him a little bit. But still, he was a fun little Pokemon to use and even to draw because I just realized it's black and gray. I have those colors sussed. Well, black and, black and uh, yellow, mostly. God, where's my, where's my... I haven't had enough coffee. My brain is just all over the place as of recording this. But yeah, the coloration was very easy to get right again using my own lighting just to make it look cooler and of course as with the generation one i go around with the sharpie to help them stand out a bit more against each other as if there wasn't any outline uh, they kind of probably get lost um and amongst each other the funny thing is all these pokemon were way easier and way less detailed than generation one and i think i kind of made that choice subconsciously because i knew i liked them and i would want to draw them later on but on to this third pokemon um the third pokemon was actually one of the pokemon that stuck around the longest in my team uh, i think i caught him a little bit after i got my i can't remember exactly where i caught him uh, but he was one of the longest standers in the team because i absolutely loved its pre-evolution when it evolved i was just like yo this thing's epic and that is Ursa Ring, and I called him Barry. Yeah, that ver that younger version of me. <laughs> Actually, no, they wouldn't be that much younger. They'd be like, oh god, when did Diamond and Pearl come out? When did Heart Gold and Soul Silver come out? I can't remember. But yeah, I called him Barry just because you know, tiny teddy bear turns into a big teddy bear. Eh, it works. And 
he was actually an interesting Pokemon. Even though he was normal type, I mainly had him learn the specific punch moves. So like fire punch, ice punch, light and thunder punch. Because I realized quickly that, you know, I'd want those moves for specific reasons. And of course, me being me, I don't realize that I haven't been a actual pose to use a move until I start doing the outline. And I'm like, oh, he doesn't have a move. Perhaps I should draw him using Ice Punch. Because I hadn't really drawn Ice Punch. I'd drawn Fire Punch. You know, thinking about it now, I could have drawn a Thunder Punch. Good job, me. Good job. But anyway, I decided Ice Punch would look cooler. Pun intended. Uh, than a Thunder Punch. But, again, this is kind of funny because most of the colors of Ursa Ring I actually had... And I didn't notice it until I actually drew him that both Ursa Ring and Umbreon have that circle symbol on them. Ursa Ring has it predominantly on the stomach, but Umbreon has it on its head and its legs. I never noticed that until actually sitting down to draw this Pokemon. I was like, huh, I wonder why they both have that, because it's a bit different. Um, with how they evolve, because Umbreon is level up plus friendship, and I'm pretty sure Earth Ring is just straight level up. Oh, and also Umbreon's at night. So yeah, it's like this little bit of moment of a, uh, huh, that's pretty uh, interesting. Like a design feature that carries across a couple Pokemon, and honestly, I didn't really notice it, which is also kind of hilarious. Now, very early on, was Pokemon that I did try to level up a bit, uh, but in the long run, I think most of his levels came later on, and yeah, it was definitely interesting to um, try and remember everything that I'd done with it. I do remember after he evolved, he was like one of the go-to for a lot of gyms, because um, Urza Ring is one hell of a strong Pokemon. Like, it can tank some hits like there is no tomorrow. And so Barry became, like, the tank Pokemon for me to use for this generation. And honestly, I loved it because, you know, he's a giant bear who can handle attacks and dish out attacks. It was really, really cool. And actually redrawing him and trying to remember all the cool things I did with him. A lot of fun, but also really difficult, because I'm realizing how long it's been since I played those games, and it's absolutely crazy just thinking about it. Oh, gosh, because this actually, yeah, the Gen 4 ones, I, 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 cannot, I cannot remember when Gen 4 stuff came out, but yeah, he was quite the good Pokemon to have on the team, and, you know, I really enjoyed using him, but it's sort of a moment of, uh, am I remembering everything, or am I remembering specific parts, because there's odds, odds are there's a lot more I did with this Pokemon than I actually remember, but I just can't remember it all at once, and on to our fourth Pokemon, now the fourth Pokemon is actually one of my top 10 favorite Pokemon of all time, without a doubt, um, because I love its pre-evolution, and I love its evolution, just because of how cool it is, and I would love to see it come back and, like, be useful later on in Generation 8, please, Gala form, please, uh, that's actually a Don fan, I called him Don Rolio, if I remember correctly, that's actually interesting, I have a weird habit of calling things Don when they have Don, like, Don something, or the Don when they have Don in their names, yeah, perhaps this version of me still wasn't that great with some of the naming. <laughs> but anyway, with this uh, Don fan, I wanted it to... I remember catching him as a fan pee, and it was honestly quite cool because I actually loved how fan pee looks, but when it came to a Don fan, a lot of people don't like it, but I actually still like it. It's a badass, like, elephant that turns into a spinning ball and can mess up a lot of Pokemon. You know, what's, what's not to like here? 
sure some people don't like the fact this part tire, but that makes sense to me. I, I like it. it. Looks cool. And of course, you know, I had to draw him using one of the moves he used a lot. If I drew him uh, using rollout, you wouldn't have seen any of the details. So I actually drew him using Hyper Beam. That's the second Pokemon I've drawn using Hyper Beam. How much do I rely on that move? Now, obviously, um, Don Fan has very specific underbelly colors. And I don't have those colors. So I was just like, okay, what's the closest thing I have? I did find um, a couple which were pretty close, but Don Fan's underbelly is actually like a desaturated blue. I don't really have desaturated colors. Most of my colors are like vibrant in your face, like punch you in the face with color. So I just had to make do with what I had, which resulted in a very actually, now that I look back at it and look at it again, pretty close to Don Fan colors Don Fan. But anyway, uh, with Don Rolio, after I caught him, because um, I did it, this was at the point where I knew what Pokemon I wanted in Heart Gold, Soul, Silver. I'd actually used a Fanpy in another game. I think it was Emerald. Yeah. So I already knew what he evolved into, and I was like, oh yeah, I want him on my team, because A, I remember using him in Emerald. B, I just like this Pokemon. And he wasn't in my champion team in Emerald, just so you know. I only used Pokemon from that specific generation in a champion team. That's what I do. I have, like, multiple teams. I have, like, A team, which is new Pokemon, B team, which is um, usually returning Pokemon uh, Pokemon from prior generations, or what has become as of Gen 7 uh, regional variant team. And then I have C team, which is a combo of new and regional variants that I like. And then I always have a D team, which is just Pokemon I like. You know, I always have that set up. And I quite... I think it works quite well because my A team is always my champion team. I can train up the other teams and, you know, make it work really well. But uh, Don Rolio specifically, I remember using him the most in a couple of the later gyms. I actually can't remember the gym leaders. Oh my god. <laughs> you think I'd remember that, but I don't. But yeah, I remember using him in the uh, later gyms and more in the Elite Four than some of the earlier gyms after I got him. But I just realized I'm rambling too much about him, and I'm on to the next Pokemon already in the video. Wow, memory lane does make you forget what you're actually looking at. Now, the next Pokemon I actually got was a uh, Pokemon which, again, was actually kind of cute and evolved into something even cuter, and that is a Lantern, who I called Gaida because of his um, lanterns, well, because of the bioluminescent is it bioluminescence? I think it would technically be bioluminescence on his head. And the fact it's a water electric type. What's not to love? So yeah, Gaido was actually a Pokemon which I'm pretty sure I caught as soon as you could catch a Chinchou. Like, the route where you could actually find them, I caught it then and there. And again, this is an easy Pokemon to draw. And that ended up making this part of the video go really, really quick. <laughs> So I remember catching him, and he actually had a lot more use in the early gyms. Oh, the early... The gyms after where you could catch him. Where is my English today? <laughs> but after it evolved into Lantern, it had, solo uh, it had solidified its space on my team. Because I at first I was like, oh yeah, it's a water electric, but if I want to, I can just go catch a Flaffy and get an electric type and then catch another water type and you know be absolutely sussed but once it evolved into lantern i'm just like bugger that i'm using this guy because you know water electric is a cool type combo and honestly lantern just just looks adorable you know again i'm drawing him using a move that he used quite a bit and i taught him quite a few electric moves like the ratio of electric to water electric was on the heavier side because it's like it looks cool and electric moves are generally quite useful. So I'm pretty sure he was mostly an electric type Pokemon. Well, an electric move Pokemon. And, oh great, I'm already on to the last Pokemon. So the last Pokemon, again, was another one that I caught early on and kept through to the champion team. 
and that is a fortress. Now, I actually caught it as a pineco because, you know, that's how that works. And I, <laughs> when I caught pineco, I was just like, this thing looks interesting. It's a bug type that's a pine cone. What am I going to do with this? And I actually wasn't sure if I was going to keep it on my champion team for the longest time until it evolved into fortress. And then I'm just like, yeah, I'm using this. Because like, it went from this weird pine cone to something which literally has fortress in its name. You know, it is a fortress Pokemon, so I figured it would be a tank. And I was right, Bug Steel. Good combo. But anyway, because it was Gen 4, I decided to draw him using Gyro Ball. I believe that's the name of the move. It's a steel type move that, like, creates a ball of energy. Or turns the Pokemon into a ball of energy. I cannot remember. The anime just picks things weirdly. But the funny thing is, again, this is a Pokemon really easy to draw. And I actually had quite a few of the colors, to my surprise. Even the, um, I guess the shell color? Like, I was testing out some other colors that I had, and I was like, oh, this is actually as close as humanly possible. So with this, I actually started with the um, the red and the black section, and also the gyro ball, because I was like, you know, those probably need the uh, most detailed color. And unfortunately, me being me in this situation, I hadn't put the extra bit of paper underneath where I was drawing the fortress, so the color bleed occurred and the page below it got ruined, so I can't use that page. I've already moved it out, so hey, at least I'm getting there. And... I remember using Fortress a lot in the later gyms, because I, I ditched Pinecone to the back of my team. I didn't use it as much. I'm pretty sure I called this guy um, Cones, with a Z. Future me now realizes how stupid that was. Past me doesn't. But anyway, thank you everybody so much for watching. This is my Johto champion team.